down for you. Okay. I'll uh, it's really a privilege uh, to share the following words uh, on behalf of um, what I believe to be the greatest human father our Heavenly Father could give, our dad and our papa. It is one of the highest honors of my life to bring a humble tribute to our son, Mitch, on behalf of our family. Mere words are insufficient to express our deepest gratitude to God for loaning him to us for 28 years, 4 days, 13 hours, and 16 minutes, and shaping him into the mature man of God he grew to be. It was not his intellect or upbringing or self-determination that produced who he became. It was the saving, forgiving, healing, and empowering Jesus Christ the center of his life, who did. Many of you could tell funny Mitch stories or serious conversations with him and we'll have your opportunity into a camera after the service. But for those of us who truly know Mitch, behind the laughter that Mitch invoked by his antics, there was a profoundly serious person who genuinely wanted people to live and love fully, to feel accepted, to know that they were important and valued by God and others in the world. Mitch was always fun, but never flip. He often made people laugh, but he was never glib. His fun had a purpose, to bring joy and connection between people, to diffuse awkwardness, to set the stage for something more important. You will soon see some of the lighter side of Mitch on the screen, but I'd like you to see the deep person behind the fun. Our family, of course, is closest to him. We know him best. Summarizing all of our recent conversations on Mitch's character is the trait of being self selflessly loving, he expressed that in a number of ways. He spent most of his time on other people. He spent most of his money on other people. His life goals all surrounded helping people grow and know God better. Evidence, evidences of his selfless love are many. He responded sacrificially and immediately when he felt that someone might benefit from his presence or time or money. Adam, he moved to Maryland to live with you until such a time that you were ready to be married to your wife. He moved to California to help his brother advance his ministry. He spent untold hours in school cafeterias to befriend a struggling or friendless teen. He aided Bonner's Ferry, Timberview, Corridors, all in different ministries willing to be a background participant. We have received scores of emails telling of Mitch dropping everything to help them move, set up, or do something that many people say they have little time for. He celebrated his siblings' marriages and made a commitment to invest in the lives of his sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws and their families, Mittmans, Nagels, and Pettises. Not begrudging his siblings' new commitments to other families, but joining and celebrating those families as his own, even though he would wait years before enjoying his own marriage. He responded with a yes whenever he could help, his parents being the most frequent beneficiaries. It is accurate to say that he leaves an enormous hole in our family that will require brid bridging now that he is in the full-time work of worshiping God face to face. Mitch would want people here to commit themselves fully to God, to their families, and to serve others. He told me last week one of his ministry goals is to steer people away from talk-only spirituality and steer them to dive-in head-first spirituality into a life of serving God and others wholeheartedly. Holiness matters, Mitch said about a month ago. He said, God shapes the character, character of those who will resign themselves to him and seek him and his will. Mitch's attitude of gratitude and selflessly loving commitment were demonstrated in his final day. When the doctor gave him the option of heavy sedation on a ventilator to possibly extend life but likely cause him to lose awareness of those around him or a shortened but alert time frame with pain meds to reduce discomfort, he chose the latter. When the, daughter, when the doctor asked solemnly if there was anything Mitch wanted to say, he simply replied as he did with every doctor regardless of the news he received by saying, thank you. Only four hours before Mitch's awareness evaporated and only nine hours before he went to be with Jesus, he asked his wife Chelsea to sit on the edge of his bed so he could ease her distress by giving her a weak, but I'm sure a very effective back rub. In my estimation, we need more people like that. I told Mitch the other day, son, many people live wastefully in one of two ways, either spending their lives selfishly with the preoccupation on themselves 
or they leave too much on the table, leaving their greatest contributions and gifts unused. Both are wasteful. You have done neither. You have lived selflessly and exhausted your energies in kind and generous service. Your 28 years have been rich and full. I am confident God has already told you, well done, faithful servant. You have been faithful with little. I'll give you more. We celebrate Mitch's new position before the throne of God, though it would be dishonest to say we didn't beg God with passion and tears for its delay. But we are deeply thankful to God for his life. We thank God for the final victory. It seems odd to say, being the parents, that Mitch is truly one of our most admired heroes that we have in this life, but he was to us and his siblings, foibles and all. We want to thank you for being here and sharing with us, but more than just being here, we thank you for praying so faithfully for him over these past 16 months. Mitch was thankful, and we join him in expressing our thanks. <laughs>